Well, Barnes and Barnes began as a little uh, secret release of excess energy between myself and, and Robert Hamer. Um, I had always had, since the age of 11 or 12, pursued this kind of straight ahead musical path. You know, call it folk rock, call it alternative, but you know, here I am, I'm either in a part of a band or I'm a solo guy and I'm doing stuff that you can kind of categorize like that. But Barnes and Barnes was just a little something we, Robert and I would do at our houses with our little two track machines originally as like, you know, goofy stuff, teenage kind of stuff. We started it when we were 16 and it was never really meant to be shared. But um, over the years we, we, we wrote and recorded live a lot of goofy little songs. We were both big fans of Zap comics and things like that. And Robert was a huge fan of the Dr. Demento radio show, which at that point in time was global, was a big syndicated deal. And honestly, I really wasn't. I, I didn't listen to it that much, but it was a big passion with him. So he was like, I'm going to send in a couple of these Barnes and Barnes songs. Let's pick a couple of them and do them, you know, because they were just jams. And he said, he, let's pick a couple and do them right. Let's really, we had a four track, a little quarter, a TAC 3340S four track machine in my living room. So we cut a few. Uh, Fish Heads was one of them. We sent it into Dr. Demento, and honestly, you know, it is the most popular song in the history of his radio show. It became an immediate hit. There's just something about it. We wrote it together. Robert wrote the chorus, all power to him. Fish Heads, roly poly, right? He wrote that, and I wrote all the verses. I took a fish head out to see a movie, didn't have to pay to get it in. Anyway. So we wrote Fish Heads. It was my idea to do the chipmunk chorus vocals. I had to fight him tooth and nail on that. He didn't want to do that. And I said, oh, come on, let's do it. It'll be fun. All right. So, um, so we made Fish Heads, and it became this big radio hit. And um, Bill Paxton uh, is a friend of mine, and at the time was a, a close friend of mine. Uh, he's you know since become an uber star and moved out of LA but in 1978 he was local and and he was a friend and he is a, a filmmaker Rocky Shank is a incredible cinematographer and photographer and he and Bill were both from Texas and wanted to make little artsy films together so along with a gal named Joni Farber who was Robert's girlfriend at the time who designed our look for Barnes and Barnes, the goggles with the painted eyeballs and the trash bags is like an outfit. Um, she designed that. We set out to make this little gorilla film. It was shot on Super 8 and an, a hand cranked 16 millimeter Bolex camera that we bought, um, kind of like the, the stuff that Buster Keaton used to work with. Be, so you could shoot a sequence and then crank it back and do a lay, you know, mask certain things off and, and get these double exposures. and and creative stuff, and Rocky was really good at that. Um, we made Fish Heads on a, Barnes and Barnes paid for it, you know, I, I, I think it was a couple thousand dollars, it was very, most of the money was in processing and, and final cut, and uh, you know, we were real happy with it, and all credit goes to, to Billy Paxton. Uh, what a go-getter. Completely enthusiastic, would not take no for an answer, took his own money, flew to New York. He said to us, I'm gonna get fish heads on Saturday Night Live. And we were honestly, honestly, we were kind of like, okay, yeah, right, Billy, you know. Uh, I had been asked, Sissy Spacek was a very close friend of mine at that point in time, and Sissy, when she hosted Saturday Night Live, had said, you know, come play guitar for me. And I didn't. I, I don't know, I didn't want, I don't know, I didn't. And I thought, well, that's not gonna happen, you know, it's not gonna happen. And Billy went anyway, said, oh, it's gonna happen. And sure enough, it ran two weeks in a row. It, they ran it, you know, twice. And uh, not a rerun, but in two different episodes. And, and uh, it, it ended up being entered into a lot of film festivals, and it got, garnished a lot of attention. And to this day, uh, we make a surprisingly, like, good amount of money off Fish Heads and a few other songs in the Barnes & Barnes catalog, but f especially Fish Heads. It's been, you know, uh, like a greeting cards and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so I like Barnes and Barnes. I, I respect the quirky, left of center, you know, tongue-in-cheek stuff. And uh, we made like uh, nine albums. <laughs>